All right, we are live. Hello, everyone. So, oh, let, me see. let me share this real quick. There we go. All right. Sorry, I just wanted to share it on my Facebook page. Oh. So this is Theodore, and Theodore is about a year and a half years old. A uh, year and a half. <laughs> I know, almost a year and a half years old. And this is my first time meeting him. And the reason why I'm here, his owner tells me that he was such an angel, just a perfect dog. But then, you know, okay, buddy. Um, after a, a traumatic experience at a grooming shop, he his behavior kind of changed. You're okay, you're okay. And now he's like unsure of people. And he gets a little bit aggressive, you know, like a little mouthy and things like that. And he used to not be that way before. It's okay, dude. And so now what I'm trying to do is uh, step one of my process is build rapport. Make sure he's okay with me, gets used to me touching him. Oh, all right. And she did give me some treats here. So I'm going gonna, gonna to use some treats with bacon flavor. Here you go. What's this? This is the There you go. <laughs> Just takes a around. You're okay. So this is gonna take a little bit of a the first because again he doesn't really know who I am. He doesn't know me. I don't think he watches YouTube. <laughs> but anyways, um, this is this is gonna be a little bit of a process, you know, getting him used to me first and then getting him on the table and then um, cleaning out all this dead coat because I can feel it. It feels kind of brittle and rough. You're all right. It's okay, dude. You're okay. All right. So yeah, here we go. I'm gonna my chat. All right. I'm gonna look at this. So this is a a place in Buckhead, and they have this grooming room here for dogs. It's so amazing. Okay, so you're all right, buddy. I'm going to get my slipper brush. Um, so I have my tools set up back there. So I'm going to get my undercoat, I mean my de-matting uh, rake here, uh, my slicker brush, and a greyhound comb. So get that over here.
Man, all right. But let me go ahead and move this a little closer here so you can see what's going on. Okay. There we go. And that way I can, I can stay here in front of the table, make sure that doesn't happen again. All right. Oh my goodness. Okay. So that was not cool. There we go. All right. There we go. All right. So, I'd like to start from the, I usually start with the head, but He's new, he doesn't really know me that well, so I'm going to give him a chance to kind of get to know the, what I'm doing. So I'm going to start with the feet and the legs. There we go. Let's bring him with some hook conditioner. Oh man, there's a big mat on the tail. Okay. Alright, that's alright. Here's a question. Here's a question. There you go. Good brush. Good boy, Teddy. There you go. Okay. Okay. So they've already washed him yesterday, so he's not going to get back today. He's just, are you okay? So he's biting me now. So today we're just going to get him used to grooming and just kind of give him a little shape up with the scissors, shape him up everywhere. And the main concern is the face, so that we can see his eyes and shape up his face a little bit. You're okay, buddy. It's okay. No, no. You're okay. No, 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 Theodore. No. See, that's, so his owner was telling me that he used to never bite before, but ever since uh, she took him off from that guy that's pretty good where he was just shaking and trembling, now he bites. And it is a little bit hard, but it's not like, he, it's not like he's clamping down to try, to try to hurt me. It's more just he's trying to get me to stop. You're okay. Uh, you're okay, buddy. You're okay. It's okay, buddy. No, no, it's just a brush. It's just a brush, buddy. You're just brushing. You're okay. You're all right. You're all right, buddy. No, no, no. You're okay. No, no. Okay. No. Good boy, you're doing so good. 
Good job. Okay. Good job, buddy. There we go. So first I break everything up with the slicker brush. Oh, you're okay. Yeah. Oh, it's alright. Yeah, he kind of bites. But he doesn't really bite to hurt. He's just kind of biting to try to get me to stop.
slice through it.
So yeah, I'm actually starting to believe. He has every right to let me know how he feels. You're okay, Theodore, I understand. All right, any other suggestions? So he feels the metal and stops biting. Oh, okay, yeah, I mean, we'll see. We'll, if he starts, but the thing is, a lot of these tools are sharp. You know, I just don't want him to accidentally get hurt, you know, hurt his gums, or cut his, cut his gums by accident. Nice, that's working much better. So using a mat splitter now, just to kind of split out everything. Good boy. There we go. Good boy, thank you for your bar. You're okay. the big solid mat broken up, then it's pretty easy after that to get it all brushed out because like I said, they're all dead hair and so it'll just come right out once we break up that pelt. Okay, good boy. So it feels like I got it pretty... Now, let's go ahead and go through with the dematting rake and see if I can get the rest out. Good boy. Awesome. Good job, buddy. No, no. So it's whenever it does kind of pull a little bit more. There it goes. And it's understandable. It's probably because these mats, they're, they're pulling out of skin anyways. The tighter the mats get, especially when it's a big, tight mat like that, a solid pelt, it's, it's pulling at their skin. And so when it's constantly pulling out of skin like that, then when I go through, even the gentlest, you know, little tug will probably feel really, you know, painful. So that's what causes that. And as long as we're willing to understand why they're biting, you know, then it's, 
it's much easier not to take it personal or not to get upset. You know, and then when they start to bite really hard and it becomes pretty serious, that's when you can correct them, you know. You just gotta be firm. Firm but also gentle. Okay. And I am holding the base of the hair so it doesn't pull too much. There you go, buddy. Awesome. Awesome. I'm sorry, Lily. Good boy. that part off, then it's not really going to help much because all that dead hair, that was, that's, you know, the reason why it matted up, it's still going to be in the skin. And the, the crazy thing is, even though it is kind of dead and frayed and like velcro, because of the way the hair grows in, in units, in bundles of hair, it'll continue growing, that, that really fuzzy dead hair. It just keeps growing. And so then it's going to mat up again. So we're not really going to, it's not really a long-term solution. It's just a really temporary, you know, quick fix. It's really not going to solve the problem. Uh, thank you so much with your patience with our Theo. Oh, how well, nice. For those who, of you watching, he went through a very traumatic grooming experience, which has caused him to become aggressive towards groomers. Yeah. Thank you for putting yourself out there. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, I can't watch. I want to go help him. Clean your tool, it won't cut with all the hair. Okay. The biggest problem is that it's a three-handed job with really <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And he, he's not trying to be mean, he's just, exactly. No, let him bite hand, okay. Perfect. Yeah. So now we have the tail pretty much almost all dematted. And see how the comb just goes through now. And we don't get the same reaction. You know, so it's not like he's just, he's just biting for no reason. You know, he's reacting like that because it's painful and he's scared that it's going to hurt him more. There we go. Good. There we go. Yeah, so it's not like he's aggressive for no reason, you know. Something definitely happened that caused him to distrust groomers or anybody, you know, that messes with his hair, and then by going, now I can just kind of pull him out with my fingers. There we go. Good boy. See, now I can go through the same area, even with the fine tooth side of the comb, and I don't get that reaction. Good boy, Theodore. Good boy. Okay. I'm oh, sorry, buddy. Nice. 
there we go. So now, by combing out all of this dead hair, that's really what was causing the mats, because again, it's like Velcro, they just kind of attach to each other. So by combing all of this out, now, even if he goes and runs out in the rain or gets wet, this hair here, it feels silky, nice and tangle free. Good boy. There we go. Good job, buddy. Thank you, Theo. Thank you, buddy. Uh, Karen Evans says, hi. Uh huh. Okay. Let's see. Theo will be just fine. He is in very good hands. Oh, thank you. Thank you for the <laughs> vote of confidence. Uh, Sarvin, he's in the best hands. I'm so thankful. Oh, thank you, Sarvin. Once he's done with his groom, he will feel so good, and you should start brushing him every day a little bit so he gets reused to. Yeah, exactly. What's up, Karen? Ruth that says, Junior. Uh, Sarvin says, We brushed him about every other day. He thinks a brush is still a toy, so we're. Oh, nice. Okay. <laughs> and, yeah, I can tell. He's, he's, not, he's not neglected. It's just that that tail, that one area, especially around this time of year, it, it gets out of hand pretty quickly because um, just like the trees, you know, with the change in the sunlight, um, they say it's, it's photo periods, a change in photo periods. So whenever there's a change in sunlight, the intensity and the duration of the sun, see we're still getting some, um, it causes, just like the trees start to, the leaves start to change colors and fall off the tree, you know, fall off the branches, the hair, see, it starts to detach from the root and starts to become dull and frayed. And by combing it out, what we're doing is we're creating room in the skin, letting the poor know, hey, it's okay to you know, grow new hair now, right? Then that way they grow the new coat, the new undercoat for the new season. Because unfortunately dogs, they can't buy new clothes like we do, you know, buy fresh underwear and buy new outfits for the new season, they grow their clothes. So because they're growing their clothes from their skin, their new outfit, you know, it needs to have room to be able to grow their new hairs. And so that's why combing the dead coat out is such an important part for these long-haired dogs because um, their hair is not going to shed out like, like short-haired dogs. Like a lab, you'll see the lab's hair all over your floors. With a long-haired dog like this, because they push the old hairs out, the new hairs, it's just going to sit in there. And so by combing it out, and look at that, his, his legs really aren't even that matted. So, Sarvin, oh, you're yeah, okay. You're yeah, alright, buddy. Sarvin's doing a really great job. Look at this. And whenever I hit the mats is whenever you see that reaction. It's alright. You're alright. Okay. Nice. So that comb's going right through. Ow. Oh, Ow. Oh. Okay. There we go. Now, we go down through here. There we go. Good job, buddy. Okay. So now, where I come through, it actually starts to feel much more fluffy and soft. There we go. You're okay. Alright. I'm sorry. There's still a little mat right there. There we go. That's what it was. <laughs> Good job, Theodore. All right. See, still getting some more dead hair out of the tail here. Okay. There we go. Nice. 
And once I get them all combed out, then I'm going to go ahead and give him a nice little scissor trim, and then he will be done for the day. Well, I'm also going to do the nails, of course. Trimming file the nails. You're okay, buddy. You're okay, Victor. Thank you, buddy. So there's just a few mats down here near the feet, which is expected, you know, it's nothing unusual. And it's actually really not that bad. He's actually in really good shape. You're okay.
ears are actually in great shape because usually the ears are matted on most of these long-haired dogs around this time of year especially but the ears look pretty good now there's a little few minutes right there so i'm going to break it up with the slicker brush first spray a little bit of the conditioner on there and also then i can use the matte matting uh, right here so let's split it up. Oh, it's pulling too much, so I'm going to use a mask litter. Clean the hair off. <laughs> All right. Oh, you're okay. You're all right. There we go. Good boy. pretty early in his life, right? So because he's still pretty young. So he's still trying to figure everything out. And all we know is that, you know, he must have, I don't know, I don't know that hurt. He must have, uh, you know, had a really traumatic experience at the groomers last time. And so now he just feels like he has to fight, see? Ouch. He feels like he has to protect himself. And what I want to do is show him that he doesn't have to do that, you know, and it's not going to be a bad thing. The only way I can really do that ow, ow, is by not reacting negatively whenever he does, you know, feel the need to protect himself by biting me. And you can tell he, he does have a heart. <laughs> whenever I say ow and I let him know that he's hurting me, he backs off. Okay. Good boy. Okay. So yeah. The mats were hiding underneath the top coat. So that's why it looked like he wasn't matted, the ears. But yeah, I see the all mats now. There we go. Now that I've broken it up with the mat splitter, right, split it all up. Now I can go. There we go. You're okay. You're all right. All right, and then I can go through with my metal comb and pull those broken mats out. So that, now that it's all broken up, the comb can pull it out. Okay. There we go. Good boy. And see now, I can go through that same area and I don't get that same reaction. You're okay, you're all right. Ah! No, Teddy. Or Theodore. <laughs> well, I mean, Teddy is a short history for Theodore, right? I mean, I don't know. Hopefully, I'm not ruining. <laughs> so don't call him Teddy. You don't want to use, you'll get used to a wrong name. All right, Theodore. I can call him Theo, right? Theo? <laughs> Okay, good boy. Alright, so now that ear is combed out. Awesome. Oh, I know. Sorry, buddy. It was because of that, that mat right there. You're okay. See? It's gone. Okay. There you go. Good boy. Okay. 
you can literally feel like the bundles of hair, the dead bundles of hair right there. It feels like little bumpy, like little rough bumpy spots in the coat. But then as you comb it out, it feels much softer. See that coming out all these little dead bundles of hair. All right, so we'll do the other ear. Okay, the other ear is not as bad. It's not as bad as the other side. There we go. Break it up with the silver brush first. No.
Maybe we can get a really pretty poodle to walk by. Alright. Oh, okay. Alright, maybe that's why they say men are dogs. <laughs> I can totally relate. No matter what's happening, as long as there's a beautiful woman walking by, I can be distracted. Hey, hey. There we go. So that. So it's those little pin mats that are causing him to react. No. No, buddy. Hey, 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 hey. There we go, buddy. No. Ow, ow, ow. Okay. Hey, wait. Ow. Theo. No. No. There we go. So I have to show him that that, that behavior is not going to get me to stop. Right? So that way, because if I, if I stop and, and he gets what he wants, you know, if I stop grooming him, I stop combing him, you know, because he's biting, then he, that, that's, again, okay, as long as I start biting harder, he'll eventually stop. But I want him to know that, no, even no matter how hard you bite, I'm not going to stop, you know, because I need, to, I need to do this. This is helping you, right? And... Yeah, I mean, I just, and, but the thing is, I also want him to know that no matter how hard he bites me, I'm not going to retaliate and hurt him back, you know? If anything, I might just, you know, scruff him, you know, by the back of the neck, kind of like a bigger dog would do, like a mama dog, but not in anger, just to control him and get his attention for a moment and say, hey, no, like, that's not good. And then continue, like, you know, business as usual. There we go. So, you know, you want to be in control of your emotions at all times with, when you're grooming a dog. And it is difficult. It, I mean, it was, you know, for me as well in the beginning because it's scary, you know, when a dog starts biting you. It's easy to feel really scared, you know. But being scared of the dog kind of shows a little bit of mistrust, right? It kind of shows that you don't really trust them fully because you're afraid they're going to really hurt you. Um, so it, it, it took a while, but I mean, I'm like, what, 10 years deep in this now. So for me, um, I've trained myself not to react and, you know, not to have that reflex where you just pull your hand back, you know, ah, you know, because you don't get bit. Now I just let them bite me. And depending on how hard the bite is, you know, sometimes I'll, you know, correct them. Sometimes I'll look for a muzzle, but then... That doesn't always work either. Sometimes putting a muzzle on a dog that's already scared and they're trying to bite because they're scared or in pain, it, it kind of sets them off. It triggers them, makes them even worse. So, you know, just gotta, so you just wanna, you know, and not all bites mean the same thing. You know, just because a dog's biting you doesn't mean they're trying to hurt you or they're, they hate you. You know, sometimes it just means, hey, stop it. You know, I don't like what you're doing. And then by me not reacting to it, it lets him know, okay, you know, maybe he's supposed to be doing this. Good boy. So there's a big mat right there. I'm going to try to split it with this mat splitter. There we go. Good job, buddy. Good job, Theodore. Awesome. There we go. Nice. Okay, I know. I know it's uncomfortable. You're okay. Ow, 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 ow. Ow, ow. Okay. There we go.
So as soon as it catches, rather than yank, you know, I, I kind of turn it out so it doesn't yank too much. You're okay. It's okay, brother. There we go. Okay. Oh boy. Under his chin is kind of matted, that's why he's reacting. There you go. But by combing it out, like I said, this is actually going to give them a long term solution because these mats are not going to form again so easily because, because we're getting rid of the old hair, that old, you know. Velcro like hair is causing the matting to form. Ah, you're okay. No, no, you don't. Thanks, no. No, thanks, no. Hey, ah, ah. Okay, no. No. Okay. Let's see what we can do with the mask sweater. Uh, 
Okay. There we go. Nice, buddy. Okay. Because uh, when the, if the nails are long, then it's going to kind of distort the feet a little bit. And especially when I try to trim a nice round, you know, little teddy bear foot, um, it's going to mess up the, the shape of it if the nails are popping out. So I'm going to go ahead and trim the nails first. And that's also another area that dogs get comfortable, so he might grow another tantrum when I'm doing his nails, and we'll see. We'll just cross that bridge when we get there. There we go. Good job, buddy. Looks like he's feeling much more relaxed as well. There we go. Okay, so. Let me go ahead and get the nail clippers. Oh. Um, Lee, you can tell he doesn't want to bite, but it's his only defense. One day he, when he really gets that, you only want to help him. Exactly, exactly. And he doesn't bite for no reason, see? Like, it's only when I get caught up in a tangle and it starts to be, you know, hurt him. But even, even the areas where he was biting before, now that the mats are all gone, he's not biting. See that? Right, buddy? Good job, Theodore. Right? He's a sweetheart, actually. It's just that, you know, it was hurting him. He was in pain. He was scared that I was going to hurt him. But, you know, when he realized that I'm not going to hurt him, and I'm actually just helping him, you know, look at that, buddy. Oh, good boy. And by showing him, you know, by my reaction when he bites me, that it doesn't matter if he bites me or not, I'm not going to hurt him, I'm not going to get upset with him. I think that really kind of reassures him, it shows him like, oh, okay, you know, I'm not in danger, this guy's not trying to hurt me. Good job, buddy. Sorry, there's some mats in here. It looks like I'm going to have to pluck the ears as well. There's, the ear canal is really full. Let me show you. Look at that. So the, there's a bunch of hair in that ear canal. So the reason why I'm going to have to pull that out is because that hair is preventing air from flowing. And when the hair blocks the ear canal, it causes the ear canal to get warm and moist inside. And heat and moisture is a breeding ground for bacteria. So I'm going to have to pluck the ears as well. Grab my nail clippers. I'm going to clip your nails, buddy. Okay. Good boy. We're just gonna clip your nails, okay? It's okay, buddy. It's okay. There we go. Good boy. See, it's more out of uh, the anticipation of pain. He thinks he's gonna be hurt. You're okay. Wow, this nail is curled over. Wow, it's a curled over into the pad. Okay, so that rear dew claw. Look at that. Isn't that gnarly? It curled off. Okay. Good boy. Let me see. All right. Wow. Good boy. That was long. Okay. So he has rear deep paws. Whoa. This one too. Oh my goodness. So. Let me show you. This is pretty gnarly. 
Okay. So check this out. Okay. So check this out. Let me peel that hair back. Look at that. See that dude claw? It, it's grown all the way around back into the claw. Isn't that crazy? Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna clip that nail. Just find a good point here. Good boy. See, it's the anticipation of pain. So um, if you're gonna when you're gonna clip it, you just gotta clip it. Look how long that is. Um, if you're gonna when you're gonna clip it, you just gotta clip it. Look how long that is. See that? My goodness. <laughs> okay. But yeah, it's the anticipation of pain that's causing the reaction. So when you, if you're gonna clip it, you just gotta clip it rather than hovering over it and hesitating. Because if I do that, if I do like this, okay, actually not. Maybe you trust me. Okay, so now I got that dude nice and nice and short there. Okay. So that nail's already short. These nails could use a little flipping. Good boy. Good boy. Okay. All right, let me see here. There we go. There we go. Move this back here so you can see. Exactly, he's reacting to pain. He's a good doggy. Yeah, he actually really is a good dog. All right. There really, you know, there really isn't any such thing as a bad dog, you know? Hey, you okay? Ow. <laughs> there you go. No. Good boy. Good clip. Good boy. Here, let me see. There we go. You got it, buddy. Okay. There we go. You're okay. You're okay. See, there's a mat right there. Okay. 
Okay. Looks like there's no questions or comments. There's a lot of brown um, stuff. It's, it doesn't look like a big problem right now. So it's just something that I would like to do to prevent any problems in the future. So if he throws a big fuss and it just seems like it's not really worth the fight, then maybe I'll try it next time, you know, once I have a little bit more rapport with him. All right. So what I like to do is with the thinning shares, actually, 
move it like this so you can actually see what I'm doing. Okay. So, with the thinning shears, first I want to get here. And not all of this, because this is kind of nice and cute, right? But just in front of the eyes. Good job, buddy. There we go. See, so got all that added out from the, from the eyes. And so now you can see the eye a little bit better, right? So again, clean all the hair up. There we go. all that brown, wet, nasty hair that wasn't there. Here up. There we go. And then clean it up really close and tight right from the eyes. There we go. So now, when you look at him, you can see his eyes. Look at that. Nice, right? Okay. Over the eyelashes. 
There we go. So now you can see those eyelashes sticking out. Isn't that awesome? Okay. Make sure you get the visor nice and short. Same thing to the other side. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? How those eyelashes stick out of the visor now? Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. I'm gonna find long eyelashes. Are you okay? Hold them down with my thumb, comb it all out, and then same thing I did on the other side, to this side. Just go right there over my thumb. Okay. So, now that we've got the, the eyes and the visor done, So we do the same thing to the other side. Come it all up. Listen. So clean up this part here. And 
Push it off over with my fingers. Alright. Get it all forward. Good. Just round it up. That looks like we lost connection. Uh, he was very curious dog, pretty adorable too. Yeah, he is. He is darn cute. Yeah, I did a Japanese pup the other day named Pip. His behavior was so much like little Theo. Uh huh. Pip was sent home unfinished on all three of his grooms for the same sort of behavior and was labeled a biter. Uh huh. Yeah, right. Um, and that's the thing, we gotta be careful with the labels, you know, because we can doom a dog to a horrible life just because we label them as aggressive or a biter, you know. And yeah, they do bite, but when we understand why they're biting, you know, is Wayne Dyer, I think it was Dr. Wayne Dyer, who says, when you label me, you negate me, right? So we gotta be careful with the labels. Especially with people too, that's something I gotta work with, work on. A friend of mine kind of pointed that out to me too. You know, he was like, you know, you wanna be careful with the labels because when you label somebody, you kind of negate them. Okay. Look 
Sorry about that, it looks like we lost connection again. Oh man, but let me let me show them to you. Look at this. Oh my goodness, look at this nice round face and head. So we trimmed the ears. See that? Oh, I gotta clean up that, that area right there. But look at that. Oh my goodness. Theodore and those eyelashes. Look at those eyelashes. Aren't they so beautiful and long? Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> okay. So let's go ahead and finish up this haircut. Good job, buddy. Clean up this. Your legs and feet. Oh my goodness, he's looking so adorable. Okay. Okay, so let's do your feet and legs. Look at his tail. Earlier this morning, just a little bit. His tail was so mad at earlier. So it doesn't look so straggly now. There we 
down. Tidy up this. this underline here. There we go. Okay. Now to his front foot. Bottom of the foot cleaned up. And down. Um, round it up. Good job. So just to show you the difference, 
So, <laughs> I get up. So this side has been trimmed. See that foot back there is nice and round. This foot back here. And I also scissored the leg, you know, just to tidy up the angles there. See that? So, and I trimmed up this leg here. And so this leg has not been done, or that foot. See the difference? And then this leg here as well. See how it's still like kind of straggly? So that's the difference. All right. So now we're just gonna do the other side. And then we'll kind of soften up all the uneven hairs, make it nice and soft and round looking with the thin shears. And then I'll try cleaning out his ears, plucking them. But if he throws a fuss, then we'll just do it next time. Clean up here a little bit better. Just so his tail's not dragging on the ground so much. See that? I'm just gonna. There we go. Nice. So here's the tail now. Trim just the base of the tail to keep it nice and clean and tidy down here. Alright, now let's do that back 
square along with the sanitary area, but since I'm not washing him today, I'm just doing a trim. Um, I don't want to use the clippers and, you know, just in case the clippers causes him to feel itchy afterwards because it's close shave, I don't want him to feel uncomfortable and irritable and itchy, you know, licking his paws because that's going to cause his paws to get all dirty and brown. So because I'm not washing him today, that's why I'm not using the clippers for his feet. Shape, shape that rump up right there. See that? Give him a nice round shape. Shape what his mama gave him. <laughs> okay, that was that was a corny joke. I admit. Okay. Probably should have filtered that one out before I said it. It's all right. It's all good. Okay, there we go. So that back leg is shaped up now. See that? And now we just gotta do the front. Just to get that extra 
layer of undercoat out of the skin. There we go. So you can go longer without worrying about getting at it again. There we go. See, it's a little hair. Even though it's catching, because I'm not catching on any mats anymore, he's not reacting. Or maybe he just trusts me for now. Uh, I spoke too soon. Spoke too soon. <laughs> okay. Oh, now I see something. Anything else here? There we go. There we go. I saw it on the camera. Alright. Okay. So I think uh, it, it, it does help to, you know, film it. <laughs> because when I look at the screen, I'm, I'm seeing it at a different angle than I'm actually seeing it in first person, like from my point of view, and I see different hairs sticking out. <laughs> so I'm able to catch the uneven hairs, you know, that I may have missed because I'm not looking at it at that angle. So the camera does help. It's like, oh wow, I see some hair sticking out there. Good boy, Theodore. You're such a good boy. One hand in the way. Big old hand in the way. Thank you. 
now I'm gonna get my undercoat rake and just rake So much better. So for me, <clears throat> grooming is not just about the haircut, it's about skin care, you know? <clears throat> it's about actually taking care of the skin, making sure the coat is nice and soft and silky, it's not full of dead coat, making sure it's out of the skin, right? making sure all of this is brushed out of the skin. There we go. <clears throat> because really, good grooming is about good skin health, right? It's about good hygiene. There we go. That way we get the results at last. <clears throat> okay. There we go. Alright.
Good boy. There you go, buddy. Good boy. Good boy, Theodore. Now, I'm going to go through and smooth everything out with the dinning shears, and he is done. Good job. Good job, Theodore. Okay. Nice. He feels so much smoother now, so much silkier. Fluffier. So now his, his coat doesn't look so clumpy, so chunky. You know, it actually looks soft and fluffy. And it feels nice and silky too. Okay, nice and soft, clean. Same thing on this other side. Okay. 
Good boy, Theodore. Thank you, buddy. Okay. Check this out. Check this handsome boy out. Oh my goodness, Theodore, look at you. Look at that, nice little round feet. Hey, buddy. Hey, let me look at your head. Oh, <laughs> awesome. Look at him. Hey, buddy. Good job, Theodore. What a good boy. Okay, so, he is all done. Nice. Let me go ahead and get his collar and everything back on. Oh, sorry. There we go. Okay. Oh, whoa. Janet's place. Hi, Janet. Late coming in. Nice looking pup. Oh, yeah. You should have saw him earlier. Oh, my goodness, Janet. He was biting and going nuts. Look at this. Tore my fingers up, but it's all good. Look at that. But it was because he was all matted up, and he had a pretty bad experience somewhere at another derby shop, and so he, you know, he had some bad learned behaviors. Oh, look at these little round feet now. Oh, look at this round face. Oh, mwah, mwah, mwah. he's such a good boy. Uh, but anyways, he is, was now scared of being groomed. And he started getting really aggressive. So now he at least had a good experience. And even though he bit me and everything, he realized, you know, he's not gonna get hurt, nobody's gonna hurt him. You know, everything's okay. Am I doing this the right way? Uh, I might be on the wrong way. <laughs> okay, yeah. Right, left. Oh, okay. Right, left. There we go. Okay. Nice. It's nice that they have the instructions inside. <laughs> All right. There we go. Awesome. So look at all. Isn't he so beautiful and cute? Look at him. Oh, Teddy. What a cutie. <laughs> awesome. So he is all done now. Let me go ahead and text his mom, let him know that he is all done. Uh.